Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Bedtime Stories. I'm your host, Jim Ligafor. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you haven't watched our episodes before, welcome to Bedtime Stories. And if you are our regular viewer, then welcome to you too. Thank you for joining me today. Now, you know what I'm going to ask you? Have you brushed your teeth? Are you cosy in your pyjamas? Is that a yes? Then let's get started. So I would like to carry on with the book that we read in our last um, bedtime story, the story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I thought the book was so interesting and, and full of so much knowledge. So shall we start where we left off? I think the place where we left off was when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's uncle Abu Talib died and his wife Khadija died also. So that's where we left off. So let's start from there. <clears throat> there was a great loss for him and there was years of sadness and grief. As he was sad and lonely, he called his slaves aid and they went in the direction of the Ta'if, a town in East Mecca. The leader of Ta'if did not accept his call to Islam, nor did they welcome him. Instead, they ordered their slaves and their children to call him names and, and hit him with stones. Muhammad, peace be upon him, left Ta'if with blood running down his feet. Zaid tried his very best to help the Prophet, peace be upon him, from any harm that came to him. On reaching a fruit, uh, on reaching a fruit tree, they rested. While resting, a slave served him with lots of fruits. On hearing Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saying Bismillah before eating the fruits, the Christian slave was very amazed. He was shocked. He listened to the call of Islam from Muhammad, peace be upon him, and soon he too became a Muslim. On their way back to Mecca, Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw Angel Jibril, along with the angel of the mountain up in the sky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent them to help the messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him. The angel of the mountains asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, if he wanted the mountain to destroy the people of Ta'if. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was very forgiving. He, so he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, to pardon. Pardon means to excuse them and to bless them with the children who would be good Muslims. Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Zayd returned to Mecca, continuing calling the people to Islam. There were many visitors to Mecca who accepted Islam. When they returned to their tribes, they called them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to follow his messenger, peace be upon him. Among the new Muslims, there were seven from the city of Medina. They went back to Medina with the good news. Many of the Medina became Muslims and hoped to meet Muhammad, peace be upon him, one day. Since the death of his uncle Abu Talib, it was even harder for the Muslims to live in Mecca. In the meantime, the Quraysh were now plotting and planning to kill Muhammad, peace be upon him because he did not have his uncle to protect him anymore, but he has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. One night when Muhammad was asleep, Jibril, the angel, came down to him with an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his Lord who wished to meet him above in the heavens. He asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, to mount an animal called al Burak, which was white in colour, smaller than a mule, but bigger than a donkey, but it was very fast.
Beit al Maqdis, a masjid in Jerusalem, was their first stop. There he led all the prophets before him in prayer. Soon after, they went up to the nearest heaven. When they reached the gates, Jibril knocked on the door, and a voice inside asked, Who is with you? Jibril answered, Muhammad. The voice asked again, Has he been called? And Jibril replied, Yes. The voice said, He is welcome. The door opened, and inside the heaven, he met Prophet Adam. He was the first man created by Allah, and he is the father of all mankind. They went up to the heavens, and on their way they met prophets, who were sent before him to guide the children of Adam. Muhammad, peace be upon him, met Yahya, Isa, Yusuf, Idris, Harun, Musa and Ibrahim salam. When they finally reached the seven heavens, Jibril, peace be upon him, said, This is as far as I can take you. He asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, to rise up. The low tree at the utmost boundary in the highest heaven. The leaves of the tree were the size of an elephant's ears and the fruits were like jars from a place called Hajar. The sacred house, which was called al Bayt. Al-Mamur was shown to Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is the house which the angels worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Almighty spoke to Muhammad from behind a screen of radiant light and commanded him to follow, to worship 50 times a day. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was on his way down to Mecca when he met Musa in the sixth heaven. He sent Muhammad peace be upon him, telling him to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, to reduce the number of prayers. Musa said to, said it would be hard for the followers. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced it to five prayers a day. And that's the end of the story for the story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And as we've learned, if Prophet Muhammad did not ask Allah to reduce the prayers, we would have had to pray 55 times a day. But Alhamdulillah, we only pray five times a day. Now, I have chosen another story with you that I want to share with you. It's called Goodnight Stories from the Quran. We could start off with how Allah created the planet. So, let's begin. Are you ready? Are you comfortable? Okay then, let's get started. How Allah created the universe. <clears throat> Long ago, there was no earth, there was no sky, there was no sun, there was no moon. There was darkness everywhere. Then Allah decided to make a beautiful world. Be, said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And simply by saying these words, the whole universe came into existence, including me and you. Allah created the beautiful universe full of galaxies, planets, the sun, the moon, all the stars are all moving in harmony, all glorifying and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah just said the words. Do you know what those words are? B. Allah just said the words and there was the earth and the sky. There was a bright sun shining 
moon, twinkling stars. Then came the dry land and the oceans. By just saying the words, Allah made them all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the large oceans and the big seas which cover the earth with water and from the deep lakes and the long rivers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the sea monsters, yes, there are sea monsters, and all the fishes, big and small. Allah made lovely flowers. He made all the large and tiny things. Allah made juicy fruits like mangoes, oranges, cherries, crunchy apples, sweet grapes, and soft bananas. Which fruit is your favorite? I love all the fruits. Where did the fruits come from? Allah made them all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made animals. Some live in the forest. Some live in the cities. Some are large and others are small. Beautiful birds flying in the sky, spreading their wings and flying by. Where did they all come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them all. Allah gave us rain. He gave us sunshine. He gave us the cool breeze, the clouds passing by. We thank you, Allah, for making such a wonderful world. The father of humankind. When Allah decided to create a human being, he collected every kind of soil and he mixed it like a plotter's K. Molding it into the shape of a man, Allah breathed into it his spirit. In this way, he gave life to the first man, the father of us all. Allah named him Adam. Allah gave him wisdom and made him the first prophet. Allah also created the first woman, Hawa, or Eve, as a helper and loving companion to Adam. He told the couple to live in the garden in paradise. Paradise also means heaven but warned them not to approach a particular tree. This was the test of Allah. But Satan deceived them to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. But immediately they asked Allah's forgiveness for their wrongdoings because they did not listen to him. Allah forgave them both, but told them that since they had not listened to Allah's orders, they would have to leave the gardens of paradise and go down to earth. They could no longer live in heaven. There, Adam salam, and Hawa found themselves all alone, for no one was living there on the earth at the time. The story of the Prophet Adam salam, teaches us that we all have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that therefore we are all equal. We should, we should then respect each other, every human being, and never look down at others or insult people. After all, we are all the children of one forefather, the Prophet Adam salam. The Gentle Brother Prophet Adam salam, and Hawa were blessed with two sons, Habil and Kabil. When they grew up, Habil, the younger brother, became a shepherd. He herd sheep, goats and other animals with his elder brother. Kabil worked as a farmer, tiling the fields, tilling the fields. One day both decided to make a sacrifice to please their Lord. Habil took the best of his flocks, 
while Kabil bought his crops. Suddenly, a spark of light came down and burnt Habil's offerings. It burnt down to ashes. Thus, Allah accepted Habil's sacrifice, but rejected Kabil's sacrifice. Kabil felt hurt at being disgraced and insulted. His face darkened with anger and his heart became hardened. No, cried Kabil, I will kill you. He said, at this threat from his older brother, Habil did not shout back. He just said calmly, even if you raise your hand to kill me, I will not fight back. For I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds. But Kabil's anger got the better of him and he killed his innocent brother, Habil. But soon Kabil's anger cooled down and he felt very sorry and very bad. Now I killed my brother, said Kabil to himself in deep sorrow. But what shall I do with his body? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a raven which landed on the ground near the body. The raven began to scratch the ground to tell Kabil that he should bury his brother's dead body under the earth. Woo is me, cried Kabil, but it was too late. Helplessly, I am worse even than this raven, for I cannot hide my, my brother's dead body. Kabil felt his meanness all the more so, because even the raven could te couldn't teach him a lesson. The moral of this story is that two believers should never fight with each other. Even if one of them is bent on fighting, is willing to go ahead with fighting, the other one, like the gentle, obedient Habil, should never fight back. Narrating the story of the two brothers of the Quran reminds us, if anyone had hurt or killed a person, except as a punishment for murder or other corruption in the land, it shall be looked upon as if he has killed all the mankind. And whoever saved a human life shall be looked upon as if he saved the whole of mankind. So what does that mean? That means if we hurt one person wrongfully, we've hurt the whole of mankind. And if we can save one person and help them, we have saved the whole of mankind. Let's see if I've got time to squeeze in one more little story for you. The story of Prophet Nuh. Men and women had children and then there were families. But soon the children of Adam salam, began to stray and go on the wrong path. The customs displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he sent Prophet Nuh, also known as Noah, to his to, his, to guide them to the right path. Nuh went to see the people to give them the message of Allah, peace be upon him. He spoke to them in public and reached them in private. After years of hardship and struggle, only a handful of poor people listened to his call, the call of the Prophet. Each time he urged them to ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pardon, they would trust their fingers and their ears and they would draw their cloaks over their head because they did not want to listen. So they would block their ears. At last, Nuh salam, warned his people of an approaching flood, hoping that he would persuade them to win Allah's favour. But the people turned against him and tried to kill him. In great distress, Nuh prayed to his Lord and said, Help me, help me, Lord, I have overcome. The Ark and the Great Flood 
Allah then ordered him to build an ark under the watchful eyes. After a very long period of hard thinking, trying to work, the ark was finally ready. Then Nuh said, Embark. In the name of Allah, it shall set sail and cast anchor. My Lord is the most forgiving and the most merciful. Allah then asked Prophet Nuh to take aboard with him a pair of every living creature along with his faithful believers. No sooner than had they come on board than the rain began to fall. More and more rain fell each day. The rivers overwhelmed and the waters fell torrent. The ark rose and fell on the mountain waves. Then the flood had reached its peak. The flood was getting worse. Allah commanded the sky to hold back the rain. The clouds began to part and the rain stopped. As the level of the water began to go down, the mountain peaks began to reappear. The ark came to a rest on the mountain Judy in a land known as Turkey. And I think we will stop there for today. Just mark my page. Thank you again for joining me for Bedtime Stories. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you again soon. Have a very good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.